Hello, everybody. Hopefully your mass housing and pandemic and unemployment and uh, what else? Uh, election crisis is going all right. Mine's not going too bad. Now, I'm a little fired up about this very specific story, not only because it's my last story for a couple days because I have to get surgery, but also because I was scouring the deep, dark depths of the internet in order to find the sources that I have for this today. So I want to get into Biden's $2 trillion climate change plan, how I view it, what are his like policy proposals, what are the facts, and then I'm not even going to talk about the Green New Deal because it turns out that a lot of people know of it but don't know specifics. Like, for example, what is the proposal on how to pay for it and things like that. So anyway, let's jump right into this bad bitch. Okay, so here's what New York Times has to say right off the bat. Quote, Joseph R. Biden Jr. will announce on Tuesday a new plan to spend $2 trillion over four years to significantly escalate the use of clean energy in the transportation, electricity, and building sectors, part of a suite of sweeping proposals designed to create economic opportunities and build infrastructure while also tackling climate change. His plan outlines specific and aggressive targets, including achieving an emissions-free power sector by 2035, I want to hear about that, and upgrading 4 million buildings over four years to meet the highest standards for energy efficiency. The plan also calls for establishing an Office of Environmental and Climate Justice at the Department of Justice and developing a broad set of tools to address how, quote, environmental policy decisions of the past have failed communities of color. Almost had a little tongue twister there at the end. So, okay. Right off the bat, the question is, like, how does one pay for this? Because I'm going to get into the policies. Like, what specifically? Like, you know, like, number one, number two, and all this other stuff. But right off the bat, let's just talk about payments, okay? It's like the, the what is that called? The, the elephant in the room. I was about to say the bitch in the room, but I don't, I don't think that's a thing. Anyway, so paying for it. Campaign officials for Biden said that it will come from a mix of increasing corporate income tax from 21 to 28 percent, quote, asking the wealthiest Americans to pay their fair share, unquote, and some still undetermined amount of stimulus dollars. Well, hmm. right off the bat, what I have to say is increasing the corporate income tax is something that we all agree like that. There's already been polls on that. Like that's a mutually agreed thing that we can all be like, yes. That is 100% what we want. But there's a lot of statistics that I will get into at the end when I'm talking about the Green New Deal on on some of the issues like having to do with this. For example, what is the accountability? Because you could say, oh, well, the corporations are supposed to spend already 21% of their taxes. Well, no, because in 2018, the top 60 corporation spends a combined total of $0 in taxes. Fun fact, I have all my sources in the description box below. Why is it? God damn, I wasn't meaning to talk about this already but I'm on a tangent. Why is it that Amazon paid negative, what is it? Yeah, negative 1%. Again, sources, description box below, 2018. Negative 1% of federal taxes. They received a rebate of $129 million is what they received back. So I'm going to get into that. I don't mean to talk about it now, even though it's slowly like oozing out. But so Biden... It's good to increase the taxes. I think we should go way farther than that. Anyway, I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's just go right to the policies. So first, zero carbon pollution from the U.S. electricity sector by 2035. So right now, there's about 60% of the energy sector is comprised of coal and uh, (laughs) natural gas. Now, his campaign officials said that they expect to achieve the goal by encouraging the installation of millions of new solar panels and tens of thousands of wind turbines. Okay, good. It's like, that's okay. We, We all agree. That's a cool thing. Okay. But he also wants to keep in place existing nuclear energy plants. All right. The plan will also call for investing in carbon capture and storage technology for natural gas. So what he wants to do is he wants to fund new research and funding opportunities uh, with tax incentives for carbon capture technology. So let's break this down. First things first, zero emissions with natural gas. Carbon capture technology. I'm thinking of like a good expression. Okay, so what this is, is you imagine like, here's like a little power plant, right? Like imagine this like a little disgusting power plant that you'd see. Uh, Carbon capture technology is where you take the carbon, you liquefy it into like a diesel like liquid, and then you, you, you squirt it underground, usually about roughly a mile underground, and you put it in these containment areas. And this is according to Princeton, by the way. It's there permanently. So if you're imagining, like, if you're cleaning a room 
and you're like, oh my God, I have to like clean this really quick because otherwise like, you know, I'm going to have my significant other and they're going to laugh at me or whatever, right? You pick up all your clothes and stuff and you throw it in the closet. You're like, it's clean. It is clean. Hey, look at that. It's clean. Well, no, it's you just threw the stuff in the closet. Like it's not clean. It's not well, like, I mean, it's, it's out of the way, but it's not clean. So the same way that we're taking it out of the atmosphere, good, but we're now putting it in the ground. So it's, it, it'll, it'll help, but it's, it's, God, it's just like one of those things where it's like, it, it goes a step, but it doesn't go the full step. Right. And that's kind of an issue, but so far it's better than what we currently have by a long shot. So, okay, let's keep going. He doesn't mention hydro, which I think is important. Now tax incentives. This is where I was like, well, hold on a second here. Tax incentives. Wait a second. I thought that we gave $900 million to Exxon Mobil for research and development purposes. I can't conclusively say that we're better off as a result of that. Also, aren't they the ones committing crimes against humanity? Funding oil lobbyists in order to kill the planet right now? And now we want to give them more money for research and development? How about instead we sign an executive order forcing them to do this or else they go to prison, which I think they should already go to prison, by the way. So again, good step. Not exactly far enough, but it's a good step. So have you guys heard of something called the point of no return? Essentially what that is, is there's a certain point where the climate will increase in temperature. So two degrees Celsius is like the, the no go. That's where it's like, if we're two degrees Celsius increase annually, then that's like the no return. Because essentially when the greenhouse gases get into the atmosphere to increase the temperature by that much, it's hard to get that like back, you know, it's like once it's there, it's there. And it's going to continue to increase the temperature of the earth, thus causing like more, you know, pretty, I mean, pretty much everything. It's going to just go downhill, right? Like increased migration, more fires, more floods. Like, for example, you might not think like an inch of water in the ocean is a big deal until you think of an inch of water across an ocean and think about how much water that is because the, the ice glaciers and everything else is melting. But I digress. So anyway, this is going to be a good step in addressing this situation. But what my proposal is, is the Green New Deal. So what the Green New Deal is, is it's 100% renewable technology by 2030. And this is according to Mr. Bernard Sanders. Right now, I think with a radical change, we could probably get it done by 2035, 2030. Mm, I'm not 100% sure that we can do that. So there's something called the Journal of Energy and Environmental Sciences. And so they did a whole study on this. And they concluded that 80 to 85% of existing energy can be replaced by 2030. So 80 to 85, as opposed to 100%. Okay. So by 2050, 100% replaced. Now, when we break down, I'm not going to give you guys like a ton of statistics because I feel like you, you, you can only throw so much statistics at once until everybody's like, dude, just fuck off. Like we get the point. But the way that it would break down essentially would be 30.9, so 31% onshore wind, 19.1 offshore wind, 30% utility scale photovoltaics. So that's just a fancy way of saying solar. 7.2% rooftop PV, which is kind of solar. 7.3 concentrated solar power with storage, 1.25% geothermal, and it kind of like just starts breaking down into all the nuances there. If you'd like to check it out, it's very interesting. So that's how we would be able to do it. Jobs, 20 million new jobs in renewable energy sector. So I don't know. I don't know if you guys heard, but there's kind of a mass like job and unemployment crisis going on right now. So we're talking about, hey, what are we going to do with all the people who are going to lose their jobs because of all the oil and everything else? Well, yeah, it's called subsidize them to be able to be re-educated and retrain them into a new renewable field. Because right now we have this contrast where we have like, here's the environment, here's jobs. It's like increased jobs in the oil sector, people, yay, environment, no. So why don't we just combine the two and do it that way? Therefore, we deal with the unemployment crisis as well. So now we have an inf infrastructural change. We have a change in the unemployment. We have a change in the environment. Okay, so now let's talk about investments. How much is this going to cost? 13, excuse me, $16.3 trillion, according to Mr. Bernard Sanders. Now you might be thinking, well, hold on a second. That is too much money. Well, no, hear me out. Okay, just hear me out. Let's put this in perspective. Now I know I covered it a little bit earlier, but let me go back to it. 60 of the top corporations paid no federal taxes in 2018. I've been up all night. Coffee sponsors hit me up. Okay, so we get that point. 
And then we go back to the whole Amazon, you know, the negative 1% uh, federal tax rate. They received $129 million in rebate. And then on top of that, according to routers, there's $2.3 trillion in offshore accounts right now that are not being taxed. Now it's more than likely significantly more than $2.3 trillion. But I think we get the point. That's a lot of money that is being untouched by, well, the IRS. Now, keep in mind, I haven't even touched the 2008 bailout or the recent COVID bailout as well. That equals over a trillion dollars that corporations were able to receive. In addition to that, we're not even accounting for the fact that Steve Mnuchin, as a part of the Department of Treasury, just received new permissions to be able to control with essentially have more freedom to control a roughly five trillion dollars on top of the bailouts. So he can dictate like Goldman Sachs gets this and this company gets that. So I could keep going this entire time, but I think we get the point. We just want people to be held accountable. So now we have this situation right now where we're trying to think, hmm, investment, death of human civilization. Investment, death of human civilization. Which one do we choose? So going back to Biden, if he sticks with this, that's cool. It's not far enough, but it is a really good start. If. If he sticks with it, somebody might have to remind him, but I hope to God he sticks with it. We will see. Thank you.